Today on Reese Dixon, we are making this monogrammed button bracelet for your moms. Hi everybody, it's Teresa with ReeseDixon.com and today in Time for Mother's Day we are going to be making a button bracelet and we're going to be adding a twist so that you can monogram your bracelet. Uh, you can make it say your mom's initials or her name or even just mom which is what I'll be doing. So the first thing you'll need is a ton of buttons. I went to my thrift store and I found a million of them in different colors of white or cream. And I got all of these, these were all $3, which is a steal. But of course, you're kind of stuck with just white and cream, which is fine, but not very special. So that's where these bowls come in. This is dye, I've already got mixed up. There's about two cups of water and then about two teaspoons of liquid dye and the water is hot. I stuck it in the microwave to make sure that it'd be really hot. So for all of the buttons that you're not going to be monogramming, you just have to pour it right in your colors. So I'm gonna be doing this very unscientifically. I'm just gonna be plopping a whole bunch I haven't even done the math yet to figure out how many buttons I'll need for the bracelet. I just want to have options. So I'm just pouring a whole bunch in, however I feel like it. The colors I'm using here are aquamarine, scarlet, and tangerine. I wanted a really sunny, bold um, bracelet. So it's gonna be like this bright aqua and red and orange, and I just loved the combination. So. Here we go again. I'm just gonna pour these buttons right in and you let them sit in the hot water, depending on the material that they're made of and the color you're starting out with. It can be anywhere from two minutes to 30 minutes. So you're just gonna wanna pull these out after a few minutes and see if you're happy with the color that you're getting. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe the dye off my, see I'm wearing an apron. It's, <laughs> I planned ahead this time. Okay, so. For the buttons that you want to be monogrammed, you can go a couple of ways. These ones are just large buttons that have plenty of room for writing on them. Or you can use some like these where it's a solid surface on the front and the, the hank, the button part, is on the back. So for today I'm going to start with these and see how, see how these go. I've got this Elmer's washable school glue gel. This is the best for um, doing this resist technique with the dye. So I'm going to use this to write my letters on my button. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna do mom, and I'm just gonna write that right on with my glue. Okay, there's M, and so I'll just set that aside and let that dry. You don't wanna rush that drying process because if you put it in the hot, dye bath that glue will just melt and make a huge mess. You want it thoroughly dry, which could be overnight or if you have a blow dryer, you can rush that process a little bit and you know, or at least speed it up. But you just, you do want to make sure that that is thoroughly, thoroughly dry. There's my O. Okay, so those are going to dry while I deal with my buttons. I made myself a little die rig here. So what I've got, this is a muffin tin underneath here, and then I put a napkin on top of each muffin tin so that as I pull these out, I can put it directly onto the napkin, and that can help me like keep the cup, the colors separate, as well as work nice and clean. The napkins will absorb all that dye. So I'm going to let these sit for a few more minutes, take on a nice color, and once they're all dyed, I'm going to, oh, I'm gonna wash and dry them be using some dish soap because you don't wanna give this present and have the dye rubbing off on your mom's wrists and have them looking like this. So I'm gonna let them dye and then wash them with dish soap and dry them. And then once they're all the color I want, then we can start assembling our bracelet. Here's all of my buttons from their dye bath and freshly washed. And you can see some of these turned out really, really great. Others, 
not so much barely any color at all and that's just based on what the materials the buttons were made out of these ones are apparently a type of plastic that doesn't take dye very well but that's okay because these will be our base of the bracelet that we'll build on top of so first let me show you how our little monograms turned out like so I you're taking a risk since I these are just thrift store buttons I didn't know if these buttons would take the dye very well either, but I like that it's kind of a subtle thing. So this can still be like a beautiful, elegant bracelet without it being like Mother's Day gift, you know, screaming. <laughs> if you didn't know, you might not notice it and you'll just see a pretty bracelet, but it'll have this special significance to you or your mom. So what I've got here is some beading thread. You can use regular thread, but beading thread is crazy strong, so I'm going with that. And it's doubled over on itself. So you can see the two layers right there, so just to make it even stronger. So I'm gonna start with the buttons that didn't take the dye very well, and those are going to be my base layer. So I'm gonna run the thread up from the back, and then down from the front, and pull that close to the end, but I'm still gonna leave myself a good, uh, I'm gonna make it like a good four inches or so of thread so that I can use this to tie on my closure when I'm ready for that. And then I'll make that little X, so that means that that button will stay put and won't go sliding around on me. So I'm gonna keep doing that with all of these bigger beads up from the back and down from the front until I have a strip that's long enough to go around my entire wrist. So this will be our base that we'll build up off of with all of our pretty little tiny buttons. This is also just a great way to save yourself a little money and a little time because these big buttons will make the bracelet go a lot faster than if you tried to do the entire thing out of one that size. <laughs> this will save you a lot of headache and a lot of money. So we'll use our our filler to take up some space and we'll save the pretty ones just to embellish the top. So here's my baseline that I'm going to be building up on top of. And I went all the way across and then this is actually the little latch that I'm going to use. So I tied that on and then went all the way back. This latch just kind of hangs loose. I made sure to tie it on so that it could get past that last little button. But it just kind of hangs loose right now, so we're gonna have to make that a lot more stable and tighter as we get other buttons on. But for now, it'll just stay like that. So I went all the way across, and now I'm going to tie on the other latch. This is actually a vintage uh, closure that I got off of an old necklace from a thrift store. So I'm just gonna take all of my thread, and I, I actually ran out of thread when I got to right about here, and you, I don't know, maybe it's too tiny for you to see, but there's actually a tiny little knot there where I just tied new thread onto the old thread and kept right on going. So here, I'm going to thread through that little latch and tie that on, whoopsie, just like I did on the other side, like that. and. And again, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I leave enough space so that it just nestles up close to the next button and doesn't go underneath it. Like if I pull too tight, it just goes underneath it like that. So I wanna make sure that I leave myself enough room for it just to be next to it and then tie that in a knot with this thread here that I left behind. So I'll tie this into a knot by just crossing all four threads to under and tying that knot. Again, you wanna make sure you leave yourself plenty of space so the button's up next to and not underneath. So that's why I'm trying to keep it nice and flat. Because that way it'll lay flat on my wrist. Like that. And then this particular one has two little hooks that I have to thread through. So I'm gonna do the same thing on that other side and then tie another knot and then we'll be ready to start adding all of our pretty colors. So now that we've got our closures on, we really could stop here if we wanted to, but that would be boring because it's just a string of buttons. 
and it would be really flimsy. The second you pick this up, the buttons are all gonna twist around with just that one little thread holding them together. So we're gonna make it more stable and better looking by adding more buttons. So remember how I said that these closures were kind of flimsy because you had to leave enough room for it to not fall underneath the button? And so it's just kind of hanging loose like that. So we're going to start by fixing that. I'm gonna bring my thread up through one of those little hooks in the closure. And it's just getting tangled because my thread's so long. Okay, so now I'm gonna start grabbing some of these other buttons and pulling them closer to where that closure lies and see how I can make it overlap that hole right there. So I'm going to go back down through there and down through that hole in that base button. So that will kind of bridge that gap between the closure and the base and give it a whole other thing to be tied to. And so then I will come back up through one of those holes like that and go back down and through that base hole again This is why it helps to have a pretty colored thread, because you will see it. Okay, and see, so now that closure is automatically stronger because it's got that button anchoring that gap. So now I'm going to add my next button. I'll add this pretty pink one. And I'm going to do the same thing by kind of overlapping where there's where there's holes. So I'm gonna put one of those two holes on top of that one right there in the blue one and then try to get that other one to line up with that hole on the base button. So I'll bring my thread up through the bottom and then up through that, that blue button hole. that and then up through that pink buttonhole and then when I go down I will go down through that base hole that I scouted out pull that tight like that Okay, so it's just a matter of kind of layering where all of these holes line up. And so I'll do the next one, like here, say, and I'll just line it up with that corner hole there, like that. And I'm gonna keep doing that all the way across and adding more layers to anchor these buttons to each other and then along the bracelet. And I like to kind of scale the buttons as I go. So right now I'm working with like one size down from these big ones and the next layer, maybe one smaller. And if I do a third layer, I'd go even smaller still. So I'm just going to stitch away here and layer these buttons and have fun just kind of adding and building and building as I go. And then um, as one last final step, we'll add in our monogrammed buttons when they can just have that pride of place right front and center. So I'm gonna get everything else done and then make it so that it's just ready to add those and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like from there. I've added layer upon layer of button to my bracelet and I love how it looks. I love the little random and the little touches of these tiny little buttons make a big difference. So now I'm ready to add my monograms. I've brought the, the thread back towards roughly the center, not quite the center. As I've been stitching these buttons on, I've been going back and forth and back and forth. And so 
Now I'll stop right about here where it's time to add my monogram and I'll stitch this on just like I've been stitching everything else on. If you want these right in the center and there's not a good place to anchor it to, you can just use a little bit of hot glue. By the time you're at this top level, you've got enough flexibility that you can use the glue, whereas you couldn't just glue this entire thing or else as soon as you try to wrap it around your wrist, it would pop off. But by now you've got so much flexibility, um, you can wrap it around your wrist and these few pieces could could be glued if you need to, but I think it will look way better if the whole thing is stitched. So I'm gonna stitch that in place, just like I have been, and do that with my other three, like that, and keep going until I'm completely satisfied with how all of these buttons are layered together. There's my little initials, my little letters, all sewn onto, uh, onto the bracelet. And so then I'm done. I'm happy with how this all looks. So I brought the thread all the way to the back and tied a little knot and I added just the tiniest little bit of hot glue just to keep it in place. And so now my bracelet is ready to wear. I love how my bracelet turned out. I'm thinking maybe of just keeping it for myself and saying that Addie did it. That's fine, right? Sure. Um, I think that this principle would work whether it's Mother's Day or just any day. I love the, that subtle pastel look I got from dyeing the buttons and I think that it's the little monogram gives it just this, this touch of sentimentality without looking like a school project. I love it. So I hope that this was inspiring for you guys, that you'll give this a try for your own moms. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can see everything else I've got up my sleeve and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.